Oops. Okay, recording has started. Okay, welcome back everyone uh, to our second hour of uh, lecture. So what we've uh, done, uh, what we've covered in the first lecture earlier, uh, we talked about the the rest, sorry, the joy, the resilience and rest of faith. So when we are walking in faith, we are able to intentionally walk in joy, resilience, and in rest. Then we spoke about some of the enemies to faith. The fact is we have to fight the good fight of faith. That means obviously there are some things we have to fight against. And uh, so we just try to itemize or list out some of the things we have to fight against. And uh, so we mentioned things that could be uh, some that are personal, like things like guilt, shame, condemnation, feelings of uh, incapability, or you, know, you fight against those things, uh, a lack of knowledge of God's word, uh, a lack of understanding who we are in Christ. So these are things we have to make an effort to get into the word and know that this is who we are and live by it. And then there are also these things that Satan puts against us. Thoughts of doubt, fear, worry, all those kinds of things, right? And they come against our faith, intending to uh, cause us to you know, depart from a place of faith, get into a place of doubt, unbelief uh, in God and His Word, right? So we uh, said that. And uh, based on the questions we had, you know, what we said was, what, you know, we can differentiate what's from God and what's from the devil. Uh, by the simple thing that if, if God is really testing our faith, he's calling us basically to a place of great obedience. So he says, come on, obey me like this. So, you know, calling us to a place of greater obedience, that's God's test. Whereas Satan's test of faith or coming against our faith is causing us to disobey and depart from a place of faith in God and his word. That's how we differentiate it. But every time uh, we, 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 our faith is tested, it's an opportunity to go up to a greater level of faith in God, to become stronger in our faith. Uh, and that's the journey we make. So it's good for us to understand that in this journey of faith, there are enemies of faith. There are things that will come against our faith, but we have to fight the good fight of faith. And lay a hold of that, what God has promised us, and, and uh, hold on to the confession that we have confessed before people. You know, we have told people we believe God. We have told people that we trust his word. We have mentioned to people who our God is. We hold on to it. We hold on to the confession that we've confessed in the presence of many witnesses. The last thing I want to cover for us today has to do uh, with uh, understanding the perimeters of faith. Uh, there are two things I want to cover. Today we'll do perimeters of faith. Next week uh, uh, we will talk about the uh, avoiding presumption in faith and and we will cover that next week. Um, the, when, us, when we say the perimeters of faith, now we must understand that there are boundaries within which faith can operate. Right? So faith is not something that uh, we just <clears throat> use arbitrarily in God to do things that are outside of what God intended. Right? So we need to understand what are the boundaries of faith, right? And 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 how 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 you know, how does faith operate within God's boundaries? So that's what this this lesson is intended for. It's it's just to make sure that you know we stay on the right track, we don't get off uh, off the right path as we learn to walk by faith. So faith, we operate, we walk in faith within. <laughs> the knowledge of God's will, right? That means because we know that this is God's will, uh, we can operate in faith. 
it faith operates where the will of God is known. So when you know uh, the will of God, you operate in that. For instance, we know it is God's will to heal people. Why? Because he said, I am the Lord your healer. We know it's God's will for to save people. Why? Because he is savior. Uh, we know it is God's will to provide. Why? Because he said, I am your provider. So that will of God is known in that matter. And therefore you can have faith in line with that, with the, in line with the will of God. So nobody needs to question you when it comes to healing. It's just, hey, I, God is healer, so there's nothing wrong in believing uh, for somebody to be healed. God is provider. There's nothing wrong in believing for some need to be met, you know, because that's aligned to who God is. It's, it's who he said in the word, right? All right? So faith operates within in that realm and where the will of God is known. However, faith cannot override the sovereignty of God. That means faith does not control God. So, you know, faith is not me trying to control God. No, that's not right. That's not how faith is or what faith is. It doesn't override who God is. It doesn't override the sovereignty of God. So, for instance, God is sovereign. And he has decided that he's going uh, I'm just speaking an example that he is going to come and receive his church back for himself, his belief, the believers. So let's, I'm, I'm referring to what the scriptures teach us in First Thessalonians chapter 4, where Christ will come and he will come for his church, his be people who believe in him, and he'll raise them up with, you know, give them all glorified bodies. Now that's sovereign, that's what God decided. Now, I can't use my faith to say, Lord, you don't come down to collect us. By faith, I'm saying we will all come to you in heaven. No, I can't do that. You know, I, I know it's a silly example, but the point is, I cannot override what God has planned by my faith. No, he in his sovereignty has already decided certain things. And I can't override God's sovereignty by faith, right? So faith has its boundaries within which it operates. So I just listed out some of these things. For example, number one, faith cannot oppose God's plan. So this was what I was referring to, the return of Christ. So God has a time when Jesus will return. I can't say, I am declaring Jesus return today. You know, it's not, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> There's a time when God is going to make all things new, new and the new earth. I cannot say, I am declaring by faith that by the end of 2021, we will have new heavens and new earth. It's not going to happen. God has a plan. God has decided, right, on when he's going to do these things. So, uh, or I, I cannot oppose, I cannot dictate God's plan. You know, that's, that's something what God has decided he will do it when he wants to do it. Number two, faith cannot violate the written word of God. You know, if if God has said something in his word, that's what it is. I cannot violate the written word of God. For example, the word of God says that there will be people who go to hell because they don't believe in Jesus Christ. Now, I can't say by faith, I'm telling all the people in hell go to heaven. Uh, it may sound very nice, but I cannot violate what God has put in his word. His word says, whoever was not found, whose name was not written in the book of life, was cast into a lake of fire. That's Revelation chapter 20 and verse 15. That's the written word of God. I can't undo that. I can't say, by faith I'm saying that all these people will go to heaven. And I, no, 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 no. Whatever God has written in his word, it is written. I cannot violate what is written in the word of God. Thirdly, faith cannot control 
or manipulate another person's will. That's important. You know, and, and a typical example would be in a in a boy and a girl relationship situation, right? Uh, some guy he he likes a girl, so he goes before God and said, "God, uh, you know, uh, I, I want to marry that girl, and uh, uh, I just by faith declaring that you will make her love me." No, you can't do that. You can't use faith to control and manipulate somebody else's will. Uh, God never, it's, you don't find that anywhere in the Bible. Each person has their own choice. So I can't say, God, you said whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And uh, you know, imagine the single guy, he says, God, I desire... Uh, you know, for that girl to be my wife and uh, I want her to love me. I desire it. I believe it. I receive it in Jesus' name. No, you can't do that. Why? Because the other person has also to make a choice. That person should also love you. And, you know, it, it's it's a mutual decision. You can't just manipulate somebody other, some other person's will uh, through faith. Right? So what we can do is we can pray and say, Lord, uh, if this is your will for both of us to uh, love each other and get married and live life together, then you speak to our heart and just as you know, and you reveal your will to both of us. You know, so that's what the single single people should do. God you reveal. And then God will speak to their hearts. And if God speaks, you know, puts in both their hearts that, yeah, this is God's plan, then they will come together. But if it's not, respect the other person's choice. Respect what God is doing for the other person in their life. Right? Don't try to manipulate through faith and control them and try to force these things. If people get into a lot of trouble uh, when they misapply uh, the word of God or misapply faith. Fourthly, faith cannot force a gift or a work of God into a heart of unbelief. That means, for instance, I, I, I cannot force a person to get saved. You know, but what we can do is we can definitely share the gospel and we can pray for them that God would move upon their heart, that God would uh, speak to them, that God would remove the things that are keeping them from making a decision to follow Jesus Christ. You know, so those are prayers we can pray. We can pray that God would open their eyes, God would encounter them, uh, God would send people who would you know, influence them in a very positive way for the kingdom of God. So we can, those are prayers we can pray, but I cannot by faith determine that person's salvation. I cannot say, in the name of Jesus, I declare you, uh, uh, you are saved now. Uh, uh, no, I can pray, I can release the word of God. I can speak the promises of God about that person. I can pray and intercede for that person and uh, so on. But I cannot force a gift of God into that person's heart. That's something that person has to receive from God by faith, right? So we must understand, uh, you know, uh, how to correctly use faith. Be and the reason, you know, I, I intentionally put this chapter is because sometimes people hear about faith and then they start trying to control other people with faith. And that's not right. Uh, we, uh, you know, basically, if we are trying to control people through spiritual means, that is called witchcraft. Right? That's what black people who practice the dark arts and black magic and engage with demonic spirits, that's what they try to do. They try to control people through evil spirits and uh, witchcraft and so on. But we don't do that. We can pray for people. 
We can pray for God to speak to them. We can pray for God to move on their hearts. That is perfectly fine. But we don't try to use faith to control or manipulate people. Okay? So faith cannot oppose God's plan or God's sovereignty. Faith cannot oppose the written word of God. Faith cannot control another person's will. And faith cannot force something into their heart where they, when they don't want to receive it. You know, we just pray for God to open their hearts. So uh, understand some of these things and also, you know, just some side comments. Remember that faith is not, you know, mind over matter. It's not like us, uh, you know, what, what is mind over matter is uh, that whole idea is, well, if you just keep thinking something in a certain way, it will affect matter. It will affect the situation. Now, that's not what faith is, right? Faith is us believing in God and then using what God has given to us to make change in our uh, life situations. It's not mental gymnastics. We're not trying to force ourselves to believe something. No, faith is based on God's word. Uh, uh, and, and that's something we understand, right? It's a way of life. We live by faith. Now, uh, this is something we discussed last week already, so that uh, I won't address it again. You know, we know that even if there's some people in doubt, uh, we can continue walking in faith. We don't have to let their doubt affect us. We have a choice. We can continue walking in faith, right? So understand these these bound that the boundaries within which faith has to operate. That um, uh, in within these boundaries, we can use our faith, right, and uh, operate in the Word of God. So. Basically, the most important thing for us is stay with the written word of God. When you stay with God's word, when you stay with what the Holy Spirit is putting in your heart, you are safe. Right? There are some things that are not written in the word, which the Holy Spirit will speak into your heart, of course, you know, about things that he has planned for you, things that God wants you to have. And those are things God will speak into your heart by his Holy Spirit. Uh, when you know that God has put, put that in your heart, then, of course, go have faith uh, for him. Uh, faith in him to do that and you can uh, you can have it All right so any questions here on this chapter on uh, the perimeters or the boundaries of faith uh, did, did we all understand it any questions Go ahead, Divya. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Um, I do not know whether this is uh, related to this topic, uh, but uh, I just want to uh, uh, ask about that instance where Moses, um, when the Israelites sinned against God um, with the golden calf, at that time, Moses um, pleads with God, like God really wanted to destroy that those uh, people who who did it and wanted Moses descendants right to inherit the land so and Moses pleaded and God it says like uh, uh, God changed his mind about what he was going to do so was it against the will of God uh, Moses was uh, praying in faith was it against the will of God because God had already you know expressed that he wanted to destroy the people. Yeah, mm. the, yeah. The, I do not know whether it is related to this topic, but just I just want to clarify. Yeah, yeah. Good, you. good question. Good question. So uh, we find, uh, like what Divya just referred to, uh, we find uh, several examples in the Bible where God changed His mind. Now. And most of the time, that change in mind happened because you'll find two, kind, two conditions. One is either somebody on earth was praying or somebody on earth repented. So it shows us the power of intercession and the power of repentance. So... This is expressing to us that God was intending to carry out judgment 
console okay time has come and in the, in the case where you know uh, that they referenced uh, when the people had sinned and they were in rebellion and you know god just called these people like stiff-necked and stubborn people and they were just in rebellion to god you know after all that he had done after all that he had proved to them and shown them they would still go away from who god is uh, still go and worship false gods or create do some other things and god reached and god said look i'm just going to wipe them out and uh, moses will start again but then so that that's expressing god's intent expressing what god is planning to do is look look i've had enough it's time for judgment and then somebody intercedes in this case it was moses who interceded there are times when other men you would find prophet amos or uh, uh, elisha uh, uh, you know in the case of king ahab uh, elijah was there he went and gave a word to a uh, king ahab and when ahab repented god changed the plan god was going to destroy but god extended mercy to him because he repented so you find that somebody interceded or somebody repented and that basically averted god's judgment okay so it was not an overriding of god's will uh, but it was uh in a version saying god extend mercy because somebody is interceding or because somebody has repented meant so god extended mercy or god extended uh mercy because somebody repented now when you look at what happened with the people of israel there were numerous times moses interceded and god changed his mind but eventually what happened there was a finality to it meaning that entire generation that was walking like this in rebellion they could not enter into the promised land right so they god was very gracious to them kept coming all the way close to the promised land but then they were still in rebellion god said okay you're all going to die in the wilderness and a new generation will get in you know so there was a finality to it there was numerous uh times when god forgave but then they didn't enter into the land of promise so uh, to answer your question uh intercession is an override the will of god it, uh, it it changes the mind of god in the sense instead of judgment god releases mercy and the book of joel is one of those examples where Joel calls the the prophet Joel calls the people to fasting and repentance and says you know God is coming to bring judgment but if you repent if you turn to God with fasting and so on he will leave mercy he will leave goodness but correctly the disobedience of the people deserves God's judgment but if they repent turn to him there will be mercy so in that sense the mind of god is being changed uh, in for that people for that situation uh, either through the intercession or repentance okay thank you pastor so it's uh, it is almost like only when uh, such situations uh, right like judgment or things like that um, that god changes in case of intercession or repentance yes okay thank yes. you thank you good any other questions today okay so uh we get to close in a few minutes uh next week will be our last lecture set of lectures uh i'm going to um i'm going to 
uh, talk a little bit about faith and presumption. That means uh, just to, again, these are all guidelines, you know, to keep us all on the right track, uh, to make sure that we are, we are not presumptuous in our exercise of faith. And then after that, uh, we'll do a quick review of everything we've covered in this course, starting from chapter one through. We'll review everything. And with that, we will be com completing this course. And then what, what I will do is I will have to create three assessments for you, uh, which I will put out. And then you will take the rest of November just to do those assessments, those simple, easy assessments based on the entire course. Uh, but we will not have lectures after next week, right? So November, uh, November 5th, next next Friday, uh, we should be completing uh, the content, the course content in terms of lectures. And then the rest of November will be time for you to work on the assessments, which I will put out uh, in the classroom as well as in the e-learning portal for those who are using the e-learning portal. Is that okay? All right, so let's pray. We'll wrap up today. And uh, we'll meet again next Friday for our final lectures, and we will wrap things up, okay? Good. All right. Could I ask somebody to please close in prayer? Jafina, can you, Jafina? Yeah, why don't you pray, please? Yes, Pastor. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the amazing study about faith that we had. God, we praise everyone who is right here. Help us to grow stronger in your faith each and every day. We are learning a lot of things about faith through this class. As we grew as a believer every day, help us to grow in our faith. Help us to always keep believing on you, trusting you, and leaning on you in everything that we do. We bless our pastor and everyone right here. Thank you for filling us with an understanding heart. Thank you for helping us to learn a lot of things. As we have learned a lot of things, help us to apply it in our life. Mm -hmm. And be like David, Daniel, and live for you each and every moment in this life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again. Thank you, everyone. I look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless. Bye now.